It is uh, Sunday the uh, 17th of February 2019. I'm in front of SPVM Postacarchi Owls protesting against the SPVM police repression of my charter rights and freedoms. Uh, basically the SPVM have repeatedly repressed my ability to engage in peaceful public protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal as a result of serious complaints brought against me by Montreal Unitarians. And the most uh, recent repression of my ability to protest against Unitarian Universalist uh, clergy abuse and other Unitarian Universalist injustices, abuses and hypocrisy outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal comes as a result of Montreal Unitarian clergy abuse cover-up enabler Sue Montgomery who managed to get herself elected as the mayor of Côte de Neige, Notre Dame de Grasse on November 5th of 2017, uh, bringing criminal harassment charges against me in an effort to prevent me from uh, exposing her own complicity and even participation in Unitarian Universalist clergy abuse cover-up efforts, but also to shut down my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Sue Montgomery had me arrested on criminal harassment charges on December 11th of 2017. So just over a month after she was elected as the mayor of Côte de Neige, Notre Dame de Grasse, and just uh, yeah, about two weeks after she was uh, appointed as the deputy mayor of Montreal by Valerie Plant. I was arrested when I came to Montreal City Council meeting, the December 2017 Montreal City Council meeting, to ask a question, and yes, that question was going to be concerning Sue Montgomery's complicity in Unitarian Universalist clergy views cover-up and her past involvement in efforts to shut down my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal by misusing the SPVM police force and the criminal justice system. Um, I had previously asked a question during the November City Council meeting. I asked Sue Montgomery how much integrity she thought she had as a, uh, what was that? I'm trying to think here. Well, I think it's just integrity in general um, in terms of how she had uh, clearly abused her power in the past. Um, so, so I asked that question during the November uh, city council meeting. Sue Montgomery never answered it. Instead, Francois Limoges and Valerie Plant intervened and essentially, in, in, in terms of Valerie Plant in any case, Valerie Plant accused me of harassment. All I did is ask a perfectly legitimate question to Sue Montgomery regarding her complicity in Unitarian Universalist clergy views cover-up efforts and uh, Valerie Plant defended her deputy mayor by accusing me of harassment of Sue. Um, again, it was a perfectly legitimate question to ask a politician about their unethical behavior. Um, so that's it. I, I came to the uh, December 11th city council meeting to ask a follow-up question. In fact, the question I was going to ask was to Valerie Plant, that I was going to ask Valerie Plant how one can bring an ethics complaint against a uh, against basically an elected uh, Montreal City Councilor or Mayor. Um, that, that was going to be my question, which was a follow-up to my question and how Valerie Plant answered it in uh, the previous month. Uh, but before I could ask that question, I was arrested by SPBM police officers from the group Intervention. The group Intervention, basically also known as the riot cops, do the security at Montreal City Council meetings. Uh, they've been doing it now for some years following uh, some terrorist attacks where people were killed in uh, Ottawa and uh, saint jean de richelieu So since those terrorist attacks, uh, the SPVM's riot police have been handling uh, higher level of security at Montreal City Council meetings, so they were the ones who arrested me. No complaints about their arrest in terms of how it was handled, 
They were very gentlemanly about it. They were polite. They were professional. They were in no way intimidating or harassing or anything. They, they couldn't have really been a better rest. They were basically following orders from a sergeant detective who essentially ordered them to arrest me. Um, so I don't blame them for how they handled the arrest. I don't even blame them for arresting me because they were essentially ordered to do it by a sergeant detective. Uh, but the fact of the matter is I don't believe I should have been arrested at all. I don't believe the sergeant detective actually had valid grounds to have me arrested for criminal harassment. There's really nothing in Sue Montgomery's complaint. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube, by the way. <laughs> Search for SPVM police repression. <laughs> so, uh, guys, some guys across the street saying good for me. Um, so, uh, so anyhow, um, where were we? Oh, yes. Uh, so I was arrested for alleged criminal harassment. Um, I was taken to the uh, Centre Operational West of the SPVM. And I was put in a cell for a few hours. You can go ahead, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you can walk in front, doesn't matter, or you can walk behind. <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, uh, so yeah, I was taken to the uh, Santer Apparatus in West to see the sergeant detective who ordered my arrest. I was basically told that she wanted to talk with me. Uh, I was expecting to be able to talk with this sergeant detective, find out why I'd been arrested because I didn't know what the actual you know, charge was when I was first arrested. I was essentially told that a sergeant detective wanted to talk with me. Well, I was put in a cell for at least two hours before the sergeant detective came and I thought I'd be, in a, be able to, you know, talk with her, like answer some questions that she might have. No, she took me back to where I'd been brought in, where my possessions had been uh, essentially confiscated. You know, when you're arrested, they take your possessions and they put them in a safe place. So she took me back there, uh, essentially to release me, but there were conditions to sign. And the conditions included uh, the name of the Unitarian Church of Montreal and the conditions. Um, and uh, I believe it, the conditions were such also that it was clear that if I signed the conditions, I would not be able to go to city council meetings and ask questions. Um, and so I objected to this. I said, uh, I said, uh, you know, I have every right to protest in front of the church. I have every right to ask questions at city council meetings, and, and this prevents me from doing that. And so she put me back in the cell and said, you can see a judge in the morning, which I was actually prepared to do. And in fact, in hindsight, I'm regretting that in the end that that did not happen. So I, I was basically ready to spend the night in the cell and see a judge in the morning. And I'd, basically be able to talk to a judge uh, regarding the conditions and so on and explain to the judge why I didn't want to sign them as they were. Um, so what happened though is about an hour later the sergeant detective came back and she was much more contrite. She had been quite uh, hard-nosed shall we say at the beginning. Uh, basically you know the tough cop, uh, uh, you know sign this or else kind of thing. Came back, oh, Mr. Edgar, it's not so bad. And she basically bamboozled me into believing that the conditions were only for a few weeks and that, uh, and that they could be uh, contested. Okay, so I just got a positive honk there from the car going by. And so basically, the sergeant detective misled me into believing that if I signed the conditions, you know, that uh, I could easily contest them and that they were only for. Uh, Few weeks, you know, uh, and that you know they'd expire, and, and then it, they'd have to make new conditions. Well, that wasn't true, essentially. Um, so I signed the conditions, um, and uh, basically understood that I, I couldn't be at the Unitarian Church of Montreal to protest. But I said, okay, well, for a few weeks I can live with that. You know, it's, it's repression of my rights, but uh, but I will uh, deal with it. Um, when I did see a lawyer. The lawyer told me that where the Unitarian Church of Montreal had been written into the conditions for him, it was actually an exemption. It was actually a par part of the form that was for exemptions to the conditions. Now, I, that was a mistake, I believe, and he believes too, and others. It was never intended to be an exemption, but the sergeant detective who brought, drew up the, filled out the form, basically put the Unitarian Church of Montreal in the wrong place. 
So unbeknownst to me, I could have been protesting in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal all along. To make a long story short, my lawyer was able to get the Unitarian Church of Montreal taken right out of the conditions on February 19th of 2018, um, when we had a court date. And he also was able to make it clear that I could go to uh, city council meetings and ask questions. So basically he was able to uh, restore no. some of no, my rights uh, by contesting the conditions with the, uh, or I basically made an arrangement I think with the Crown Prosecutor. Um, but uh, then what happened is uh, down the road a bit in uh, September of 2018, uh, just a few days before the trial for criminal harassment was supposed to happen on September 10th, uh, I was in my lawyer's office. We were discussing the case and, and you know, the, the defense and so on. Um, and uh, he got a call from the Crown Prosecutor. Essentially, the Crown Prosecutor informed my lawyer just a few days before we were supposed to go to trial that Sue Montgomery had brought additional criminal harassment charges against me. She brought breach of conditions charges against me as a result of me asking questions at city council meetings. Um, and this caused the trial to be delayed. Uh, but on top of that, it also made it possible for Sue to reimpose harsher conditions on me. Conditions which, again, put the Unitarian Church of Montreal back into the conditions. Um, and it also put a 300 meter perimeter around Sue. She claimed to fear for her life, even though I've never threatened her, even though I have no history of violence at all. Um, just ridiculous claims she's making. As far as I'm concerned, if Sue Montgomery genuinely fears for her life, she's much more in need of psychiatric treatment than SPBM police protection. Uh, but I don't think she does fear for her life. I think she lied to the police. I think she is an expedient lie. She basically needed to do something to delay the trial and to, uh, to make the conditions harsher, uh, to prevent me from speaking out about, about her at city council meetings and, and so on. And I, she clearly wanted to shut down my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. No question about it. Um, so, because I can't protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, thanks to the conditions uh, Sue Montgomery was able to place on me as a result of falsely accusing me of criminal harassment as far as I'm concerned, I've decided to protest here in front of PDQ 11 uh, instead because the conditions don't apply to SPV and PDQ 11. The only way the conditions might apply is if Sue Montgomery came here and confronted me uh, and I'd be within the uh, 300 meter perimeter of her. Uh, but that would basically be a case of Sue coming and directly confronting me. Like she did on March 18th of last year, when after it had been clarified that I could continue my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, and I did resume my protest in front of the Unitarian Church of Montreal in March of 2018, after having it suppressed as a result of the conditions for half of December and all of January and pretty well all of February, um, I resumed my protest and uh, I was protesting outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal on the 18th of March. It was the day of the St. Patrick's Day Parade, I remember that very clearly. And uh, I'm protesting and all of a sudden there's this woman in a parka standing in front of me and I realized it was Sue Montgomery. She pulled out her cell phone and, and took a picture and then she immediately called the police and it was clear that she was trying to make a complaint against me in terms of my protest outside the church um, and then she proceeded to try to uh, provoke me by kicking my picket signs into the street uh, and throwing my picket signs into the street. Um, I just want to make sure this thing's still running. Yes it is. Okay, we're doing okay here. Um, so, so Sue Montgomery deliberately provoked me. I think what she wanted to happen was for me to say something to her, in which case I would have breached my conditions by communicating directly with her. Um, but I just kept quiet, I didn't say anything to her. I did uh, 
narrate what was happening on my camera. And oh yes, everything's videoed. Uh, the whole incident was videoed, so it's available on YouTube. Um, you can go find it. Um, if you search for Sue Montgomery Charter Rights in Google, you'll find a blog post about Sue Montgomery trying to trample on my Charter Rights that day. And that blog post has uh, all of the videos on it. Uh, so it's easy enough to find. You just Google Sue Montgomery Charter Rights, you'll find it. Um, so in any case, police from PDQ 11 came and I was detained. They told me that I was not under arrest, but that I was being detained uh, because they were going to do an investigation as to whether or not I was actually in breach of conditions. If they determined that I was in breach of conditions, then they would arrest me for breach of conditions. But if they determined that I was not in breach of conditions, they would let me go. Uh, so what happened is, is the two SPVM police officers from PDQ 11, who in my opinion on that particular occasion, on that particular day, were very polite and professional and did their job properly and did in fact respect my charter rights and freedoms, they did an investigation and they determined that I was not in breach of conditions. Um, so they released me and since my protest was almost over at that point anyway, I just left. Um, so essentially, Sue Montgomery tried to get me arrested for breach of conditions on March 18th of last year by deliberately provoking me and she showed great disdain for my charter rights and freedoms. She literally threw my picket signs in the street, she pushed my picket signs in the street with her feet. Um, as I said, clearly an attempt to me, but also clearly an attempt to make it impossible for people to read my picket sign. You know, when she took my picket signs and kicked them in the street, when she took my picket signs and threw